Let's learn to carve maxillary central incisor in a fun and interactive way. Hi, this is Dr. Mehik Jain and welcome to my channel. Hope you enjoy this video. So let's get started. You want to bisect the width of the block first. The block here measures 10 mm wide. So I use my divider and I'm going to mark two points on each surface at 5 mm and later join these two lines and bisect the width properly. Do this on all four sides. I'm joining the two points now and this will mark the midline. Now you want to mark the center of the small squares on both ends by joining the end points of all the bisecting lines. Let's measure the crown dimensions. Crown measures 10.5 mm in occlusal lingual length. So let's use 11 mm for reference. You always want to have 0.5 mm of, of room while carving wax for errors. So mark 11 mm of, on all four surfaces. Next step is to divide the crown section in three equal parts. Do this on all sides. Use a divider to measure and put points and join all the points. These will be incisal, middle and cervical thirds. Let's mark the label surface. 4 mm each side for cervical and 4.5 mm for incisal. That's 8 mm for cervical and 9 mm for incisal. Again, keeping a little extra room. Marking mesial and distal. Similarly for these surfaces, mark 3.5 mm each side on the cervical edge and 4 mm adjunction of cervical and middle third. Then follow the shape in the textbook to draw a rough outline. Now we begin to remove extra wax. So looking at the labial surface, remove the extra wax lying outside your markings. Be careful at the incisal third as there is very little room. Doing this you will see all the marks and markings on the mesial and distal have gone. But that doesn't matter right now and you'll see that later. Now continue this on the other side. Redraw mesial and distal surface outline and trim the excess wax. I've already cleared excess from the lingual aspect of mesial surface. Now let's remove the lingual excess. To remove the lingual excess, start from the incisal third where the excess is maximum and then slowly progress to mesial middle third and then to cervical third. This is where we are at when remo after removing the incisal and middle third excess. Now let's remove the cervical third excess. This is what we've got after removing excess from all the sides. Next step is to taper the block from mesial and distal aspects towards the palatal surface. Best way to do this is to only taper the lingual half of the mesial and distal aspect. With this, you are starting to get the shape of the cingulum. Now I will further taper it towards the center of palatal surface, but do not go beyond the end of the imaginary line that could be created if the fossa boundary lines are extended to the neck of the crown. Refer to the picture for better clarification here. Distal surface here looks so wide at the neck of the tube. So mark measurements again. It's time to fine tune the dimensions. Mark 3 mm each side from the midline and you will notice there is less excess on the label but a lot on the palatal. So let's shave some palatal excess. Be sure while doing this you are following the midline especially when you adjust the fossa towards the incisal edge. There is very little room for adjustment, especially at the incisal edge. Now 
Let's start removing the label excess also, starting from the cervical third. Always be cautious of the midline while doing so. So it's best to hold the back's block in such a position that you have a clear visibility of the midline. You want the incisal edge to always stay at the center of the midline, so be cautious as you approach the incisal half so that you do not push the incisal edge away from the center. Going back to the palatal surface again to remove the little excess that was left, especially at the incisal edge. Time to pay attention to the dimensions of the labial aspect. Mark the dimensions again at the cervical third and remove the excess starting from the neck of the tooth. Make sure none of the lingual surface is visible when viewing from the labial aspect. Working on the neck of the tooth a little bit more on the labial aspect. Time to work on the palatal aspect dimension. View the block from the mesial aspect and you will notice the length of the cingulum is longer than needed. So we have to bring the fossa higher up to adjust that. The height of the cingulum, the height of the contour of cingulum should be maximum at the middle of the incisal third. Carving out the fossa. Fossa is in shape of trifozoid at this time. Imagine and mark a smaller trifozoid within this trifozoid, leaving 1 mm of marginal ridges at both sides. Carve the wax from the center now. Cleaning out and seeing where we are at now. To enhance the fossa, let's mark an inverted C below the cingulum and then slant the ditch it created towards both sides. If you have such type of carver with little concavity, it will help greatly because it will slant that ridge naturally in. We are increasing the size of the fossa by moving it towards the marginal ridges so as to thin out the marginal ridge and increase the width of the fossa. Time to work on the occlusal aspect and you want a little bit of palatal surface to show and a lot of labial surface to show so we are good there. But we want to work on getting the dome like shape on the labial aspect. So to do this, taper inside the mesial and distal boundaries of the labial surface towards the center. Mark where the slant should end and start tapering in. Keep curving in from proximal surface to the center of the labial surface. Slightly shaving the label surface and then polishing it up and seeing the results so far. Now moving on to a very interesting part. Let's enhance the proximal surfaces. To do this, you want to deepen a triangle within a triangle shape of the proximal surface. Mark a smaller triangle extending to, to the incisal edge and then just carve it out from the center. If you look the incisal third from the labial aspect, it looks blunt. So to make it sharp, you want to extend that triangle a little bit towards the incisal edge and see the result now. Continue with the same technique on the distal aspect. Draw a triangle within the triangular shape of the proximal surface and then we'll just deepen it out by carving out the center. Looking from the label, we want to give a little ditch at the neck, at the distal surface, so deepening just a tiny bit there, and there gives the ditch. I'm visualizing again from the occlusal aspect to watch out for any er errors. I still see a lot of tooth structure at the neck of the crown, which shouldn't be visible. So we will measure back the neck of the tooth and see how much 
of labial aspect can I taper in to help with that? Occlusal aspect carving is really important for any wax carving so again and again you will see me going back to the occlusal aspect to watch out for any errors. There was a little bit room to carve out the neck again so I'm going back and carving it again. Tilt the incisor edge slightly palatal and run over piece of cloth to give flattened and sla slant shape to the incisor edge. Also to round it up the distal margin of the edge just rub it over the cloth and you will see the result. Now it's time to work on the root carving. So you will mark out the label aspect of the root. Root is around 13 mm long so mark around 14 mm and start carving out the excess from the proximal surfaces. Now this is what you have after removing the chunk of the excess from the labial and lingual surface. Just view the root from the occlusal surface and, and try to flush the, the root surface with the crown surface. So remove all the excess that I'm pointing at. We see most of our label surfaces of the root is flush with the crown so but there's a lot of excess on the mesial and distal so let's remove that. Just like how we did in the crown we will also taper the surface of the root towards the center of the lingual surface of the root so that's what we are doing here. This is where we are at so far so now we will view the wax block from the occlusal surface and see that the lingual surface of the root is jetting out of the crown so we'll flush these two together. As I was polishing my wax block I now broke off the root with the base but that's okay. It's good to observe that none of the lingual surface of the root is visible and also none of the label surface of the root is visible when viewing from the occlusal surface. Only the excess on the mesial and distal surface remains, so let's work on that. So keep flushing the root surface with the ground surface on both the proximal surfaces. Now let's get the root end fall into the same midline as the incisor edge. Mark the midline again and get the root end roughly towards the center of the midline however we have to follow the contour of the root so working on the labial aspect you see the mesial apical half of the root till slightly off center towards the distal so this is where we are at up till now now let's enhance the beauty of the roots mesial and distal root surface by slightly depressing the center of the proximal surface so just carve out the center of the medial and distal surface of the root and you will see an elevated ridges on both sides which will give a very perfect look when you view the ling the palatal aspect of the root one of the last things are to mark the crown outline and then just shape of the wax below and above the outline all around. This will give a very finished look. And the last thing is to verify that we've stayed at the center of the midline. The incisor edge and the root end are in the same line. 